things are more terrifying for charging cavalry than a line of hardened spearmen with shields locked and spears leveled, particularly true when those soldiers march under the White Sun banner. Karstark spearmen are perfect cover for a battle line's vulnerable flanks where cavalry do their most devastating work. Kitted with chain and leather, they can absorb their share of hits, but are not suited as a dedicated vanguard on their own. Thanks for stopping by Big Top Gaming. My name's Brian, and in this video we're going to be talking about the recently released uh, unit, uh, the Car Stark Spearman for House Stark for A Song of Ice and Fire miniatures game by Cool Mini or Not. So, the, in the box are five unique sculpts. One amongst them is a banner. And the unit comes in at six points with a movement speed of five. They have uh, the spear attack that hits on fours and has a seven, seven, four decay stat. So pretty typical for most uh, long weaponed units that are in the game, I guess. Uh, they have a defense save of four plus, a uh, morale of six plus. And then they bring a couple different abilities with them. They have bulwark formation. So if this unit has not performed an action this round, they gain plus two to their defense dice rolls. They also have stand your ground. Each time an enemy performs a melee attack against this unit, if this unit is only engaged with one enemy, that enemy does not gain charge, flank, or rear bonuses. So I think uh, Karstark are just one of those fan favorite uh, minor houses that people have been waiting for for a while. Um, there's definitely some ones that are for sure higher up there, but if you're into car starks you're into car starks i guess so finally you get your unit to play with and when we take a look at all the rules that they bring this is a really defensive unit they have um an aggressive uh decay stat like they they can fight pretty decently but they're de-incentivized from doing so early because you want to try and make sure that this bulwark formation stuff is going off because that turns their four plus defense save into a two plus and that's pretty bonkers uh, considering that there are some other ways to kind of increase their defensive potential as well. Uh, stand your ground is also just another thing to crank them up in that defensive department. They, it, it, Your opponent is just going to lose a lot for ever going into this unit. So they have some, they got some potential as maybe a bunker for a commander if you want to put them there and make sure they don't go anywhere. Um, it's really interesting to see Bulwark Formation kind of coming back in the game. I know it used to be a card that Donald Noy had access to for Night's Watch watch and it was very different of course than what it is right now uh, but I don't think bulwark formation has is, exists currently in the game I'm fairly certain on that one but I can't I, I I won't like you know put my money on it or anything that it doesn't exist elsewhere but uh, you know this unit is extremely straightforward you want to park it somewhere and not do anything until you know later in the game so that you can or later in the round so that you can make sure you're taking advantage of this 2 plus defense roll. So with that I'm going to transition into talking about it well I was going to say some but it's really only one attachment here because I think there's a bigger discussion to be had at the end of the video surrounding this unit but uh you there's plenty of things in Starks that can increase your combat potential like you're not you're not lacking for that. If you want to throw a number champion in here to give him vicious so you can take advantage of that 774 stat, you can really do that. But I really like to play this unit as just an exist or a bunker for things that are important. And one of the things that I find most important in a Stark army right now is going to be Rickon Stark. He's got the valuable captive rule, so you get that plus one to morale test rules uh, in that unit. So these guys go from a six to a five, which is really, really good. Even when you think about like maybe vicious getting at you with them, you're still saving you still have a seven plus morale stat at that point so i think that the value of rickon invaluable cap captive uh helps the unit out and your opponent might be might want to come at this unit with with the fact that uh rickon gives them an extra victory point for nerfing the, for zip, zapping the unit but i don't think that they're going to find find it very easy to take this out um, especially given the extremely inexpensive cost at six points and then Rickon being as cheap as he is as well that gives you osha which uh, is another really good thing for this unit because one of the things you don't want to do with this unit of course because of bulwark is not activate early you want to make sure that you're saving their activation to the end to make sure that you're running your opponent out of the ability to uh, actually hurt them with that two plus defense save. So OSHA gives you some really cool abilities that are passive that don't 
cause you to take actions that can do work. So you have Counter-Strike. So every time you're attacked uh, with a melee attack, for each miss, the attacker suffers one hit. That's going to be pretty common to happen because with Stand Your Ground, your opponent's not getting rerolls off of charges. So it's nice to have there, too. Uh, Stubborn Tenacity is another one that helps you out. Each time you pass a panic test, one enemy you're engaged with suffers one wound. So uh, Rickon gives you that 5-plus uh, morale stat. So now you're actually shooting wounds back at your opponent for uh, for just attacking these guys too. Uh, it's going to be very hard to shift these or shift these spearmen out, and Rickon's going to be pretty safe in general here. The other real big reason why it's nice to have Rickon in a Stark army period is I do think that uh, I still like think that um, Shaggy Dog is probably one of the better. Uh, dire wolves in the game he's fairly inexpensive and uh he brings vicious and sundering and then uh you know he has the ability to get plus one attack die for each wound suffered with four wounds and a and a four up armor save or defense save it's not going to be like i don't know how how much wolves really survive one hit these days with that type of uh stat but it's something to consider for sure because uh shaggy dog is very good offensively and dogs in general you can just kind of park them on a zone or park them on an objective if you need to keep it or save it or you know the rest of your army's gone off in a different direction and you just want to hold an objective without committing a lot of points or um really a really high value activation and even though like i said shaggy dog's a really good uh dire wolf uh it doesn't mean that you you don't want your other units doing stuff too so you can he, he serves both roles here so you kind of get two you get a really aggressive unit in shaggy dog and then a super defensive unit that has some capability to do stuff without activating by putting Rickon in there so when it comes to commanders uh the this is a toughie because a lot of the commanders want you to be actively doing things or they want you to be uh, taking wounds or doing actions out of action, you know, like they want you to be doing things. And the car starts, you mostly don't want them doing things. If you're in, en if you're engaged with something, like you don't want to take extra attack actions. You don't want to retreat and, and mess around with that. You want them to just kind of hold the line, so to speak. So, uh, one of the things that I, one of the commanders I think could take some could find value in a unit like this is Roderick Cassell, the master at arms. Uh, he has the order mark target, and uh, that just says that uh, at the start of a friendly turn, target one enemy in line of sight in long range, they become vulnerable. He does bring boldness and courage, so each time the unit attacks, if it has full ranks, it gains plus one attack die. Otherwise, it's treated as having plus one rank for attack dice. Now, I'm not saying that Roderick Cassell wants to be in this unit, uh, he, he, it's not terrible for him. I mean, they're going to be throwing eight, seven, seven, but, uh, the main reason why I'm talking about bringing Roger Cassell is because I think all of us are very, you know, good with the idea that he just belongs in a unit of, uh, Stark Bowman. Like that's just the, a good, a really great place for him. And he can affect the table quite a bit there, but you want to make sure you have something in front of that Bowman unit because they are quite fragile and having someone kind of run defense like parking some Karstarks uh, on a flank for him or having Shaggy Dog hanging around so that he can block another side so that people can't wrap around and get to Roderick's unit because Roderick's unit is extremely valuable in the game. Uh, he would, he'll, he'd would he appreciate having that setup of Karstarks plus uh, Rickon and Shaggy Dog so that he has some extra bodies to kind of make sure that he can do his thing. And all of his cards don't really require that his that the Karstarks need to be doing something. Now, Press the Advantage does require that they need to be making attacks, but um, it's still not a bad one. For Press the Advantage, when a friendly unit is performing an attack before rolling attack dice, if the defender's panicked, this attack rolls its highest attack die value. If the defender's vulnerable, they get plus one to hit. And if the defender's weakened, they lose all abilities and can't be the target of friendly uh, tactics cards until the end of the turn. So 
even if you were to think about Karstark's trying to take active advantage of this one, they really get to do quite a bit of what they want to. If it's late game and they've kind of whittled down their ranks a bit to where they are throwing the four dice, you you if you have panic out there, you're rolling your highest. That's probably like not the most valuable part of this. Being vulnerable and having plus one to hit since they hit on fours is really good for them and uh, weaken just to kind of crush through any kind of the weakened part of this to crush through any kind of uh, defensive abilities that your opponent's unit might have uh, could work out for you as well, especially if you're thinking about doing something like activating Car Starks before the thing that can attack them attacks them. Then it means they've got the weakened token, and then Osha's going to help out quite a bit with the uh, um, with the counter strike. Next up, we've got Martial Superiority. Uh, this triggers when an enemy is performing a melee attack before rolling the attack dice. You can spend one vulnerable token from the attacker, and if you do, they suffer minus one to hit, and the attacker suffers one hit for each miss. So this is really particularly gross with the osha Karstark combo, because these aren't... Uh, these aren't same name abilities or anything like that. This isn't called Counter Strike or grants a Counter Strike rule. And Counter Strike itself, it doesn't have an innate rule. I mean, like if you had two Counter Strike instances on there, they wouldn't stack. But this one particularly does. So your opponent will, you know, you're you're gonna try and suck that activation out as much as you can uh, to make sure that um, you're getting that two plus defense save but by them just throwing the dice and having that vulnerable token on them uh you you spend it and now they're suffering um minus one to hit and then two hits for each miss if they happen to have a weakened token on them as well that's going to make it really rough too so this almost could defensively like wipe a rank or two if your opponent was just really unlucky or was using the wrong unit to fight these guys down um I think that martial superiority can get really, really gross with them and why we'll typically always be bringing Car Starks with Osha and uh, and Rickon. Next up, we have Combat Prowess. So this is a has two different triggers. It's a one of one of my favorite cards in the game. I think because it's like not just ooh you draw a card. Um, but the first trigger is when an enemy is targeted by an ability or tactics card, you can expend one condition token from that enemy, and if you do, cancel the effects of that ability or tactics card. The other trigger is start of a friendly turn, target one engaged friendly combat unit, and remove one condition token from that unit. So uh, the second tr trigger of this is going to be really uh, common. Like if people are going to be trying to get rid of Karstark Spearmen, their probably best bet is uh, through either panic zapping them or uh, vulnerable tokens. Now, neither one of those is a really big... Uh, it, it's not like this is you're going to panic zap them and they're going to die or the vulnerable token is going to zap them and get rid of them. You know, like the your shoot, your roll, they're fishing for you to roll ones by just picking your dice up again. And this is just one way to kind of keep them hanging around, getting rid of the panic tokens, getting rid of the uh, the vulnerable ones. So the second part of combat prowess is good. The first part of combat prowess is also very good for that same reason. If you're looking at trying to keep the car Stark Spearman alive, uh, and your opponent's trying to use tactics cards or abilities to kind of make that a little bit more easy for them, uh, you're able to just use ca combat prowess to stop it. It's, you know, Roderick's pretty pretty controlling, and uh, when you look at the cards that he brings along with him, uh, he can really help the Karstark Spearmen go, uh, go, the long, go to the long game uh, and, and not have your opponent messing with a lot of the stuff they do. Another... Small mention here for something that synergizes well with these guys, because honestly, when you talk about synergies, it, the it's rough with the with the unit. And we'll touch more on that later. But um, Walder Frey, Lord of the Crossing, is an NCU that's seen a bunch of changes with the 2021 update. But his ability, the late Walder Frey, reads uh, that you can only activate Walder if you have no other units that can activate this round. And then each time Walder claims a zone, you may replace that zone's effect with the effect of any zone. If Walder claims the crown, you can replace that zone's effect with one enemy becomes weakened, one friendly unit restores two wounds, and then at the start of the next round, you become the first player. So the reason why I want to mention Walder here is because if the Karstark Spearmen are in some kind of fight and they need to, you know, do something about it or you want to try and fight with them more, they'll activate before Walder Frey goes and then, you know, you, you don't have a whole lot of neat stuff to do on the tactics board. I think Walder Frey gets a little weird if you're, I don't know, but probably the NCU thing isn't a big deal because I don't think, 
a list like this would run three NCUs at least in my head. But anyways, I think I'm kind of toilet pulling into a different train of thought. But my gist here is that Walder Frey goes, he allows the Karstark Spearman to maybe take advantage of the sword spot because that's a really hot ticket item on the tactics board and can make them fight again if they need to, uh, or another unit. I mean, who in Starks wouldn't want to shoot another set of arrows or throw some extra dice, uh, especially if we're thinking about this in the frame of Roderick, right? So uh, I think that Walder can help them out quite a bit, can help them out quite a bit by getting them to use uh, tactic zones that they uh, wouldn't have access to otherwise uh, because they are waiting till the end of the game and or the end of the round and by that time most of the good zones have been taken so like you could even do something like heal these guys if they needed some extra wounds in them or something I just think that Walder has some interesting synergy with the unit being on the table uh, if not just having good abilities in general right so that that's why i kind of wanted to mention him here because i think he fits well with what they want to do and what starks would want to do like taking the swords twice in one round is pretty legit i did want to bring up just a couple of the stark tactics cards to kind of illustrate some of the points i'll be getting at here real soon and that's going to be northern ferocity and winter's might so these two cards end up adding some extra combat potential to the Karstark Spearmen, which is nice for them to have because they don't really do anything outside of hitting on fours with the sevens when they're fighting someone, right? They're a very vanilla halberd Spearmen long stick pointy thing unit. And uh, these two cards can help elevate that. But when you read the second, the other parts of this card, it's not just, oh yeah, getting sundering and rolling, re-rolling attack dice or getting vicious and doing a bunch of wounds on the panic test if the opponent fails. But they also do more work if you have less ranks and hurt you less if you have less ranks. The car to start, if, if the car start spearmen are doing what they're intended to do, which is just survive, there's a little bit of anti-synergy that comes into play with how Starks really want to do things. That's why when it comes to trying to find a, a commander that really works with them, it's a little bit more difficult because that's kind of a Stark theme is that they can really... they're really dangerous until the bitter end and the Karstark Spearmen are not really you know uh flirting with that bitter end anytime sooner just because Bulwark should be keeping them alive quite a bit and maybe I am just overestimating their survivability here but I do think that Karstark Spearmen are going to hang around for a really long time and some of the Stark play style doesn't really lend itself to the Karstark Spearmen being able to you know really fold into the army well that's why i really like the idea of having them just kind of be speed bumps for my opponent to keep him away or keep them away from uh from my really important things uh so that's just one of the one of the issues that come one of the issues i had when it figured when it came to figuring out like what are the car star experiments supposed to be doing in this faction like what's their what's their purpose and i really do think that uh you might find some interesting opportunities to do some stuff with them in relation to the tactics cards or other commanders like i thought great john umber might be interesting with them uh just for things like lash out but again you know the the more ranks you have destroyed the better and he's a you know great john umber is a really aggressive commander and probably wouldn't take kindly to just having a a random unit of shield dorks running around not doing much of anything to help forward his game plan. So another thing that I wanted to mention here too was uh, the I don't often like doing this, but I felt like I really needed to with this unit because there's another unit in this army that is so, so similar to what the Karstark Spearmen want to do that I just wanted to mention them as kind of like a comparison to maybe either illustrate or eliminate any kind of narrow gap between these two to make it seem like there's no overlap here and of course i'm talking about the house tully sworn shields they come in for the six points or for six points as well they've got one less movement they have innately a three plus defense save and they also have that six plus morale stat the long sword attack hits on fours and has the seven five four stat that we see a lot with uh you know the 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 good fighty units but so the that part of their card seems very similar to what the car starks are doing but then they have the order shield wall that just states when an enemy is performing a melee attack on this unit after re-rolling or after rolling the defense dice if this unit's being attacked from the front or flank it blocks plus one hit for each of its remaining ranks so that's really defensive and can kind of uh 
smooth over the 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 void between a two plus defense save and this three plus with the shield wall order some might even say it's a little bit better ish you know i mean when we talk about going into something like sundering maybe things change a little bit there but then they also have stubborn tenacity so each time uh the unit passes a panic test one enemy they are engaged with suffers one wound so that's kind of you know kind of blending a little bit of the osha stuff in there that we would be trying to do as well so i think that the tully sworn shields have some differences in that they uh are extremely slow they also have a keyword that's important to some people um the the tully keyword uh car starks might get you know some import put on their keyword in the future but right now it's not really doing them anything so if you think about what the car starks are wanting to do and what the tully sworn shield shields are wanting to do there is a little bit of overlap in how they function here but i don't think that the car stark spearmen or the tully sworn shields invalidate one another in any way i think they both have their own places where they can exist it's just that they feel like they're doing something very similar like i don't know if i would put um if i would put rickon in a unit of sworn shields uh but I I'm, I'm feel like it's more, like it's better in the Karstark Spearman, you know what I mean? Maybe maybe I'm a little off my rocker here, but I do think that sometimes the Tully Sworn Shields, based on what you're playing and and the uh, or what commander you're playing and, and the way your cards shake out, might want to be a little bit more aggressive, where the Karstark Spearman, they're very much programmed to sit in a spot and wait there until something happens. Um, so I, I, I guess maybe, I don't know if this comparison was extremely valuable definitely leave me a comment in the section below just to like see if the the comparison was was i being unfair was it something that didn't offer a lot of value i'm not sure it just it was something that i had thought of while i was looking at this unit i was just like man it was it, it was a real head scratcher with this unit because it really is not something that the starks do normally or the the way that they want to play is not really um you know, uplifting this unit a whole lot. But I think after playing a couple games with like a, a Roderick Cassell list that I'm kind of built in my head already, I could see that the Karstark Spearmen definitely have a lot of value in the Stark army as being something that they don't typically have access to, even if there isn't a whole lot of synergy that's involved with the unit. You know, like the, the Tully Sworn Shields can run around and do whatever they want to, and they'll have that three plus save, and they'll have that order for a uh, shield wall, and it doesn't matter. Like Karstarks, you just have to like, uh, sandbag them until the end of the in, until the end of the round, which is fine. But uh, you know, it's it's just a they're an interesting unit, and I think at first I didn't respect them a whole lot. But right now I'm really starting to uh, warm up to the idea of them, and I'm really looking forward to when that new Stark starter set comes out because that's where I'll be getting my car Stark Spearman from. And uh, right now I don't have the the models to throw down on the table, so let me know what you thought about this video in the comment section below as well. Like outside of just, you know, maybe you're finding some, uh, some synergies or advantages with car Stark Spearman that I'm not finding. Uh, but you know, I think that I've, I feel like I've got a pretty good bead on this unit and how I would want to use it. So I'm interested to see what other people's thoughts are. So thanks for checking out this video and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.